Last mini skirt preview, and this is the one the big fella who looks like Jaden Stevenson's dad is excited for. We're talking about the Brisbane Lions versus the Port Adelaide Power. Saturday night up there in Brisbane land. I'll take the new ball here, big fella, and I'm going to open up the bowling. I'm going to tell you now, we've heard of Madonna. We've heard of Taylor Swift. Oh, you can have all of those. I'm going to take Katy Perry because like the Lions, you're going to hear me roar. And I'm going to roar about the Lions and why they are going to win this one. No, they are sensational, the Lions. When you look, you look, when you've got a midfield of Neil McLuggage, Connor McKenna's running around there. All right. You've also then got big Oscar the Schnoz McInerney just putting it down their throats wherever you want it. You've got a forward line of Mr. Danaher, Mr. Hipwood, Mr. Cameron to you. They're very, very hard to beat. You've also got Lions. You've got Cam Rayner. What about a back line of Harris Andrews? What, what are you going to stop? How are you going to stop that? How are you going to stop the halfback runners? They are just lightning off the lips there. They are sensational. Oh, can I just say one thing, though? The one thing that I love about Brisbane is the way they move the ball. As Chopper would say... Here, no handballs. Robbo, no handballs. Brisbane Lions, 67% kicking efficiency that they have. They love the long ball. They love to get it long, and they like to get it deep into their forwards. Uh, Hipple will lead up the ground. Donahue will lead up the ground. They'll get it around about the middle. They'll swing onto it, and they'll get it down to Cameron. Lions buried down there in the forward line as well too. When it comes to their possession side of things, they're um, – they're pretty much even when it comes to contested, but they don't mind losing the uncontested ball. You can take the ball because we'll win it at the defensive end and then go back with the long kicking off the half-back line as well too. They've got a pressure high rating of 26. Now, that means that they're just dominating anybody that they play against from their pressure rating over the last five weeks. It is absolutely sensational, and they love to click kick the ball long, like I said. Charlie Cameron, talk about the sex factor he is the X factor for this game. He's due for a massive, massive final. I, I can't remember the time that he took one by the, the neck. Um, I'm loving this, and I think uh, Brisbane at home, at the Jabatoire, at the Gabba the Hut, whatever you want to call it, are going to be roaring Katy Perry style to a five-goal victory against the Power and black out their chance for the double chance. Okay. Um, whilst I agree with absolutely 0% of that, uh... Oh, I will say, though. Yes. There is one thing that I'm worried about. If I was Brisbane, I would be concerned that if someone negates Harris Andrews, they can be scored and scored heavily against. He is their kryptonite. And we know that the Brisbane players don't really like to run both ways. They're very much downhill skiers, but they don't like to take the chairlift back to the defensive end, and I think that they could get caught out that way. Okay. All right. I want to take you all back to when Port Adelaide were unbeaten for, for many, many weeks. In fact, it was such a long time, I can't remember how many weeks it was. Let's say 13. Didn't play anyone. I think that that form is just around the corner. Why Port Adelaide will win this game is all down to a young quartet and a forward line that has coughed and spluttered the last six weeks, but I think is just getting ready. I'm talking about Mr. AFL himself, the boy from Dali, who's literally won every award that you can possibly win bar the premiership. We're talking about the Roses. We're talking about the man who doesn't like ice baths. We're talking about the Port Adelaide Football Club oh, and Ollie Wines and the resurgence of him being there as well. You wanted to trade him 12 months ago. I still would be up for a trade if we're going to get something good back for it. No, you won't. Um, I'm, I'm the kind of guy I am. But, Peps, Port Adelaide's going to win this game through its speed of midfield. We know what they're like when they get that run on. We They have been missing the overlap, but I don't feel we're too far away from it. We've had some signs that he's coming back. We have been decimated by injuries the last six weeks. The way that we have fought through without a Ruckman, without a key forward, without a key defenseman, we have 
scrambled and we have managed to salvage a top four spot, which is a double chance for us. Yes, it's Gold Coast up. Oh, sorry, yes, it's Brisbane up in the Gabbatoire. We don't care. Our midfield is going to rip them apart. We know the quality of our young mids. We know that the forward line can work when it gets Finlayson and Nontuck. He was the hottest forward for the past, for the first 10 rounds of the season. Has dipped away a bit. We're going to get that back. We've got Todd Marshall who's going to get off the chain. We've got the resurgence of Darcy Byrne-Jones potentially and Ned McKenty in the forward line who is there for our defensive 50 small forward, def- what, that forward rock pocket defensive role that Team Simba roll with these days. I have got no concerns that Port Adelaide can do this. They are a clearance team. Um, they, they are a clearance team. That's what they do. They score heavily from clearances. They score heavily from stoppages. That's their game. They are a lock-in forward 50 team. That's what they do, repeat forward 50 entries. Harris Andrews will have his, his absolute work cut out for him if the ball is getting bombed in 60, 70 times for the game. Why they will lose, though, is two things that Port Adelaide are not good at. Defense, <laughs> critical to a game of football, and also their scoring, their scoring effectiveness or efficiency. They get into the forward, forward, forward 50 a lot, but they don't score heavily, and we keep teams close. And that's what can hurt us because it takes we can do a quarter of fantastic work, falls in a hole, team goes down and scores a goal and undoes a whole quarter's worth of work. Port Adelaide haven't got a strong back line. We have got Jonas in there. We've got an Aaliyah Aaliyah who look, can be subset- Love susceptible. Two Love two times. The same way that Darcy, the same way that that um, Moore has been found out when you put him, make him accountable, that that rolling, roaming defensive 50 uh, players a bit hard there. Um, and Brisbane do have, they do have a forward line that does concern me. They have got markers. They have got some key markers in there, um, and, and I don't know if we have the gorillas to really go with them and, and, and challenge them that. Yep. Saying that, I think we have the speed, and I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to have to rely on pure, clean football because we've all seen Port Adelaide football the last in the last six weeks. When we get on a roll, we score heavily. We score five or six very quickly. Yeah, I think both these teams do exactly the same thing, J-Dog. I think you're right that when, when there's momentum, both these teams tend to use it to their advantage, probably better than any any club out there outside probably Melbourne when they're in there, when they're striking. But I think the two of them outside the centre, clearances, front of the square. Mm-mm-mm. Tasty. Wrong chair. But that being said, Port are going to win by 10 points. Interesting. Tight. You know what? If I was If I was... Um, Fagan, you know what I'd do? What would you do? I would get Rayner, and I reckon I'd go maybe Kitty Coleman. Yep. And I would pretty much go straight crunching Rosie and Butters because I know that they can be antagonistic. They've done it to Gorn. I would love to see the tables turned and have those two just – I reckon Zork is for that role. Who? Zorks. Zork. Zork. Yeah, Zork definitely. But I, I would have them do exactly what those two do to other players around the ground. Every contest, I would be I'd be antagonizing, bumping, pinching, prodding, anything I could to those two at every stoppage I can. To say, boys, we're not taking any shit from you this weekend. Is that because Butters upset Max Gorn because oh, he beat him? Oh, oh, I didn't beat him. Wholeheartedly, I would love to see them get their own desserts. <laughs> I love I'd, it. I do. I think it'd be per- I'd be love it. But you know what, J Dog? Did we get under eight minutes, or did you waffle on too long? No, eight minutes perfect. We got put in eight seconds. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. As promised, the eight-minute preview for all four games for round one of the 2023 AFL final series. So I hope you liked and give us some feedback on the chat. Give us some feedback in the comments as well. To who do you think is going to win and why? 